Hey everyone, this is InfoShare and today I'm going to be talking about something quite a bit different than I normally talk about on my channel. I'm going to be talking about the Chicago Public Schools Selective Enrollment Cutoff Scores for 2021 for high schools. So this analysis I'm going to do is a little bit different, like I said, than what I normally cover on this content. But if this topic is interesting to you, sit tight and focus in because we're going to get deep into some good numbers. Now let me first start out by saying that this analysis that I did was intended for selective enrollment junkies. So I understand that my view count on this video is probably going to be in the dozens, maybe hundreds, but we'll find out. But if you're a selective enrollment junkie, you're going to really appreciate this. Now my intent was to evaluate four CPS selective enrollment schools to identify trends and interesting observations. I'm only looking at Jones, Lane, Peyton, and Whitney Young. Now, the data that I present is just an informal analysis. I am not a stats expert. So as I'm going through the numbers, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it in a very specific way. And I'm certain if you're a stat statistician out there, you could easily come up with some uh, issues with my, some of my analysis. And if you have any, by the way, please put them in the com comments at the bottom. So my focus is only looking at the minimum cutoff score. I'm not looking at the average I'm not looking at the maximum. Now, I also assume that year over year, when I look at the different scores, all things are equal. And that may not be true. So in 2017 and 18, maybe the tests were harder that year. And you really can't compare year over year in the same way. I don't know. I'm just doing some light analysis. Now, I'm also looking at um, the first choice preference. I'm not, I'm only looking at kids who were accepted on the first round. There are kids that also will get accepted on a second round in case the first round spots aren't taken. Those second round kids are not in this analysis. Another thing that's not in this analysis is the, the, what the scores are for the kids that are part of the principal discretion. So every CPS high school principal gets about 5% of seats that they can allocate regardless of how kids do on the test scores. Now, those kids that get in, these numbers don't represent the scores of any of those kids. The other things I wanna talk about, and I think this is really important, that scores do not define a great school. Even though I'm doing a lot of analysis on the numbers here, numbers alone do not define a great school, and scores do not define a student's success. You can have a lot of students at a, at a, that are at very high-performing schools, and they may not do well. In all of these schools that we're looking at, that I'm gonna talk about, they're all excellent. And I just wanna make sure that as I go through this, everyone understands that fit should be the most important factor when people are thinking about what school they send their kids to. Okay, so now that we got that underway, let me talk about how I'm gonna look at the data. So what I've done is I've looked at th um, four different calendar years of test scores. And I've broken each one out by the school. And then I break out by individual tier and then the rank. And so the tiers are uh, based on uh, demographics and income level in particular areas. And it's, it, it's a method uh, for allowing kids to have an opportunity in lower income areas where maybe there might be uh, some additional challenges um, from a community perspective or maybe school performance. I mean, it could be dozens of reasons, but the, the school system implemented a, a process years ago where they break out uh, different kids and different neighborhoods into different tiers. And so I show the scores of each of those different tiers and I also show the, the rank. Now, I'm not gonna get into the details of how a certain percent of spots go to rank kids and this, which percent goes to each of the tier kids. I'm just looking at the numbers on an annual basis. Um, also, I'm not gonna get into the details here of how these scores come about, uh, other than just to say that there's a 900 score test total for points, and it's made up of three different components, and there's lots of great information that you can look at for CPS that will help break that out. And then in the increase-decrease indicator, and those columns to the right, all I'm doing is comparing at comparing the 19 to 20 year with 2021. I'm just comparing increase or decrease from this upcoming 2021 
to the year before. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the increases and decreases in terms of the range. So this particular year, we on the high end, we had lane uh, in the tier one area with a 5.1% increase over the previous year. That's the highest percentage increase that we saw in any rank or tier over the last year. Now on the other end, we had a negative 1.8% decrease over in Peyton for tier two. And so that's the range from high to low. So there is not a ton of movement here in these scores, regardless of if it's at the tier level or the rank level. So next, let's take a, take a look at the tier ones. And so we saw tier one uh, increase in all areas. Uh, every tier one was up this year. And we saw also um, in tier one, some of the highest increases in percentage. So we talked about Lane just now, but if you take a look at Jones tier one, that was a 3.4%, Peyton 1.4% and Young a 2.5%. So I do think this is significant in terms of you are seeing a lot of movement in the tier one space. Now let's take a look at tier four and rank which are basically flat across the board. So if you look at these scores for four and rank, the increase, decrease, it's really flat. And you could make the argument at this point, it's as high as it's gonna get in each of these areas. No, maybe, maybe not, but you're not, at least year over year, you're just not seeing movement in the tier three and tier four space. Next, let's take a look at scores that were under 800. So in 19 and 20, in that calendar year, we had five different uh, tiers or ranks, uh, tiers that all had under 800 out of 900. That, there were five of them. Um, and, and that's changed. And so in 2021, we only have two schools now where there are two tiers uh, or one tier per school that's under 800. And even if you look at Jones at 799, you know, that's just under 800. And you know, it, it wouldn't be surprising if you saw lane tier one based on the, the trend over the last year to see that potentially go up to a 780 and also creep up into the 800 range. And that will be interesting to track over the next couple of years if the lane one uh, tier does move into the uh, 800 range. Now let's focus in on Lane. Lane saw a jump percentage-wise in all tiers and ranks. So if there was some type of award for the most improved cutoff score, Lane would get it. Now, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that the other schools, if you look at those numbers, they were all very high already. And in a lot of cases, there wasn't a lot of room for movement or improvement, but Lane's statistically had a, a large percentage of increase across the board relative to the other schools. And so um, kind of congrats, most improved cutoff scores. Now let's take a look at Lane again and, uh, and get into uh, talking about the highest score percentage increase in any category. And that was uh, in tier one. So yeah, I've got all these selected in the lane in terms of increase or decrease. But uh, we talked before about how uh, tier one had the largest increase, but there really were some really nice jumps all across the board for lane. Now, the other thing to take a look at is while they, lane had a lot of increases, lane also has the lowest scores in all areas across all tiers and rank. Uh, Lane has the lowest scores. So, you know, I think where some of this data is interesting, if you're a parent making a decision, you, you obviously are going to look at, you know, what's a good fit for your kids, what score my kids coming in with. Uh, but you know, it does seem right now that uh, of all the schools where kids with a lower score might have the best opportunity to get in, Lane is that school just because they have the lowest minimum scores 
across the board, all ranks and all tiers. So now let's take a look at Lane. Uh, we talked about how they have the largest growth in tier one, 5.1%. Now I wanna jump over to Peyton and let's take a look at tier three and tier four over the past couple years. Now, what's really interesting here, I alluded to this before, to this earlier in the presentation, uh, we're really flat here um, within three, four, and rank for Peyton. And for the past couple of years, people would talk about a school like Peyton, and I don't look at Northside Prep, very similar situation there. And people will look at Peyton and say, how can it get any harder to get into that score, to that school? Are you gonna get to the point with rank where the cutoff score for rank is 900? And right now, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. It really seems like, uh, and I don't even look at rank for 17 and 18, but 898 is pretty, uh, that's pretty flat. And even if you look at these other schools for three and four, we've really flattened things out in terms of three, four, and rank. So you know, if you're thinking over time, hey, I wonder what my, uh, if you, let's say you have an eighth grader uh, next year and you're looking at the 21, 22 year, and you're wondering, oh man, I wonder what rank or four might look like for Peyton. I think we have some pretty good data at this point to really have a good range of what those scores are likely to be. Um, going into the 21-22 year. Now, let's also look at the minimums uh, across the board, except for Tier 1, where Peyton had the highest minimums in all areas, except for one, and that was in Tier 1, where Whitney Young came out ahead 808 to 803. But Peyton does very well in, in just in every minimum score, except for Tier 1, across the board. So now I want to take a look at how, um, look at the tier four range. And, and this kind of gets into the idea of how can it get any higher, that whole notion, that Peyton saw an increase of one point in tier four. So while tier three was flat, rank was flat, we did see an increase in tier four going up one point from 894 to 895. So how much higher can these, tier, like the tier four go? You know, who knows? I mean, in 1819, it was 896, uh, but there was an increase uh, from the prior year in tier four. Finally, let's take a look at Peyton. Peyton in and, and, and the tier two range, they saw the largest drop on a percentage basis at the tier two level and negative 1.8. So talked about Lane and tier one on the increase side, Peyton, amazing school, great test scores. Um, and it, but it is interesting to look at that in tier two, there was a decrease. Now, I think you gotta take a step back and <laughs> with all of these numbers, these increases and decreases are so small on scale. We're not talking five, 10, 15%. We're looking at one, two, three percent changes. So I know I'm calling out this negative 1.8 and I'm not trying to inflate it or make it a big deal. I'm just calling out the numbers as I see them. And there, there was this largest percent drop on a percent basis um, at the tier two level across all scores. So that's my quick analysis, high level analysis of the selective enrollment schools for this upcoming calendar year. Uh, you know, with the exception of one school, uh, the schools are not getting harder to get into. And overall, scores continue to increase. That trend has not changed. Uh, in many cases, scores are flat, but we did see in that case of one school with Lane, scores are increasing. So I hope this provided some interesting uh, um, musings for you to take a look at the selective enrollment scores for Chicago public schools, um, high schools. If you have any comments or want to share anything, you want to agree or disagree or provide some context to your school or your situation, please feel free to put those down below at the comments. Um, I don't take this presentation too seriously. I hope you don't. Just wanted to do a light look at some of the data and hope you found it fun, especially if you are a selective enrollment junkie. 
Okay, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.